Hi, this is David Wesson and welcome to Gloucester. Please join me as we explore the natural beauty, the history, the culture, and the amazing people. All this and more on Awesome Gloucester. Hey, I'm out here in Halibut Point, and tonight we're going to be with the Gloucester Area Astronomy Club. We're going to be learning about the universe beyond our little universe here in Gloucester. Michael, I'm David Wesson from Awesome Gloucester. It's so nice to meet you on this amazing night out here in this beautiful place under these incredible stars. Yeah, I like to say it's the top half of Cape Ann. They, they look at the bottom half, the scenery, <laughs> the trees and everything, but, but not up there. Uh, Halibut Point State Park, we're the envy of astronomy clubs all over eastern Massachusetts because we are the darkest place within uh, 30 miles of Boston for sure. Mm. Uh, we're just out there. If you look to the north, there's Maine, so there's not a lot of light. Right. And if you look to the east, the nearest light bulb is in Portugal. No way. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's dark to the east and the north. Yeah. And to the south and the west, you get a little dome from Boston, a little dome from Gloucester. Yeah. But after midnight, they start to roll up the sidewalks. It gets, oh, it gets yeah. a little darker <laughs> there, too. So we put on a few star parties for the park every summer up oh. by the visitor center. We get a dozen telescopes up there, and people come and look through them for free, of course. Yeah. And uh, we've got a core group of about a dozen people with telescopes, and we've got about 120 people wow. in the club. So, uh, Michael, why do you keep the light so low here, and, and, and what are these red lights used for? Um, your eyes dark adapt after about an hour. Okay. Uh, and you get to see a lot more stuff. Your, your irises open up and, and the chemistry uh, on, on the back of your eye changes. Uh, and that can be ruined by a headlight. Uh -huh. And you're, 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 you're messed up for another hour. So you can look at things in red light. They use it in submarines. They use it on fighter jets at night. Yeah. Uh, it's what you use at night if you don't want to mess up your night vision. So how do you know where to look and what you're looking at? After a while, it gets to be like your backyard. It gets to be like your backyard. You know where the trees are, you know where the gopher holes are, you and know it's what. So that's the Pleiades there. Uh -huh. It looks like a, a little tiny pan. Some people confuse that with a little dipper, which it's not. This is Perseus, this so, is Cassiopeia, this W, and this is the North Star there, and the North Star is the uh, end star in the handle of the little dipper. That's Cygnus the Swan, that's its tail, these are its wings. That's its head right there. That's a beautiful wow. double star called Albireo, which everybody loves to look at. You can see the Milky Way. Do you see it? Oh, absolutely now, yeah. A lot of people on this planet don't get to see the Milky Way yeah. because of light pollution. That is sad. And it actually, as we look over there, you can see the light pollution coming from Gloucester right now. Yeah, the Milky Way disappears into a dome of light from Gloucester. I mean, you could, it's, it's interesting how over the years, we've made concrete, you know, the images that others have seen in the past, whereas there's no reason why you can't be, come out here and find patterns and see animals and see things in it yourself, and you know. It really surprised me when I started this that yeah. actual astronomers actually use constellations to find stars. I thought yeah. that they were just mythical things, patterns on the sky that the yeah. children use. Right. You know, grown up people, that's how you find stars, that's how you yeah. name, name right. stars. Yeah. Almost every star we've found has planets. Almost every star we look at has a solar system. It's astonishing. There's got to be somebody looking up and looking at us right now. Out well, there. you got to wave. You got to wave. Yeah. There's, you got to wave. The, because yeah. there's, there's billion, hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way. Awesome. Our galaxy. And there's hundreds of billions of galaxies. So do the math. Yeah. You know, there's got to be people looking at you right now. So tell me about the club. Can anybody become a member? Absolutely. We have no dues, no fees, no money changes hands. We have no elected officers. Uh, we have uh, uh, no bylaws, no constitution. We have 120 members and we're more than a decade old. We've survived like that. 
That's amazing. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. We meet at the Lanesville Community Center, and because we don't charge any money, they don't charge us. It, it, we that meet on the second. sounds like a perfect arrangement. It's a great arrangement. If people would just come, they don't need to have a telescope. They don't need to know about astronomy. Uh, uh, Two-thirds of the people in the astronomy club don't have a telescope. They just come to, mm. to hear the lectures, and, and they're geared toward the general public. Nothing goes woof over your head. Well, this is an amazing place, an amazing experience, and it's an experience that everybody should have uh, in their life. And I, I, coming out here, it's helping me to remember that it's so important to take the time to be outside and be in wonder at the universe and our infinitesimability, if that's a word, in, no, in the universe. It's not, but I know what you mean. <laughs> it's important to look at the stars. It's important to remember the stars because that's where the calcium in your bones and the iron in your blood came from. You're made out of star stuff. That's the only place in the universe that iron comes from is the core of an exploding star. That's the only That's place. That's amazing. <laughs> so. On that note, I'm right? just going to just let that sink in. <laughs> so, Michael, thank you for inviting me out and, and, and joining you for this amazing experience and exploring this amazing universe that we're part of. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. The more people, the merrier. Thank Very you. nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet you, too. Next time, come out with uh, 10 or 12 more people. And you don't need telescopes to come out here and to just take in the, the immensity and the beauty of the universe around us. All you need is a little curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. Dogtown is, is a old ghost town that was a former settlement of Gloucester. It was on the, they wanted to be protected from the Indians and from ships, battleships. And so they settled out there away from the water. And now it is an abandoned set of hiking trails that everybody can enjoy and rock out on. Oh, that's that place in the woods where they have like the stones and everything. That's right, one of the first communities in Gloucester. So Dogtown is a privately, uh, or was a privately owned reservation that was opened up to the public. More of a nature habitat in which this guy who bought out all of Dogtown a long time ago, he wanted to preserve the area. I guess in some ways he was successful. I know there's been a lot of stuff that's happened in Dogtown over many years and stuff, good and bad. It's definitely worth for the blueberry picking okay. in the fall. Nineteen thirty two, I think. Close. I know it's a wedding gift to Mrs. Hammond, whatever her name was. <laughs> it came in pieces from uh different parts of the country. So it's it's actually it's like eighty five years old. A whole bunch of different years old. <laughs> it's there's really no there's there is one designated start point, but then everything else came in pieces. So uh at least a hundred years old. About right. I'm gonna say like eighty five. Didn't he make the, um, didn't make the radar back in the <laughs> I 20s? I don't remember. 85 years old? Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Give me a kiss. Sweet. Two for two. I do not know how old Hammond Castle is, but I do know the guy that owns it is, or, yeah, the guy that owns it is also partially responsible for building the remote control. He owned several, uh, buildings here. I believe he was a fish a ship cap captain that, that ended up being a, a, some kind of a mercantile. That's the word. I know there's a Blackburn Tavern. He was the famous fisherman that rowed himself ashore in the most uh, frigid conditions, his hands frozen to the oars. Really? That was that guy? Yes. Okay. He, he, has, he said that if he if he let go of the oars, he wouldn't have survived. So he had to grasp the oars and never let go. And he lost his hands doing it, or lost his fingers doing it. The owner of the Blackburn Industrial Park and the Blackburn Tavern. Six. Right on, right on the money. Without a, Went on a lighthouse a tour, Shazam. Well, there's the twin oh, ones, and then there's one more. There's at least three, possibly four or five. Two on Thatcher's, one at Eastern Point, one on Anasquam. Four. Four. Thirteen.
Halloween. I like to dress up and be somebody else for a day and, and get to be creative. What is my favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. A time for gathering with family and just having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. Christmas, absolutely. It has to be. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Hello, I'm Leif Backlund. I'm owner of Harbor Cove Dental here in Gloucester. I've been an established dentist in Newburyport for a number of years, and ever since I moved here, I have been wanting to open up an office in Gloucester because A, I live here, and B, the people are wonderful, and the surroundings, I, I think they're the best in the world. The community spirit that Gloucester has, I think, is second to none. It's almost like family living here, even meeting complete strangers. I'm excited about this office particularly because it's brand new, it's full of technology, and all that is going to make a pleasant experience for the patients. The atmosphere should be relaxing, which I think it is. The staff is wonderful. They're all great people, friendly. Just the name Harbor Cove Dental makes me at least think about uh, the area of Gloucester Harbor, which is called Harbor Cove. I am a uh, recreational sailor. I sail in Gloucester Harbor, which is a wonderful place to boat. But I also admire the work day in and day out that the fishermen ply these waters in their boats, especially when I'm looking out in January and February and I, I see those guys going out to go fishing. I take patients' comfort very serious including the atmosphere. You can listen to any kind of music that you want or you can listen to what I listen to. There's no Muzak here. It's just about anything that you want from Bach and Mozart to B.B. King, Mark Knopfler, you name it, you've got it. At Harbor Cove Dental, we'll give you a reason to smile. It's as easy as 123 Main Street, Gloucester, Massachusetts. Thanks again. Uh, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I love this. Yeah. Ah, I love this. Wow. I love this. 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 I love that. Employees only. Yes! <laughs> I love this! You got the, uh... Get the creeper head on. <clears throat> Good. I love this. Geek. Geek apparel. Geek gadgets. Geek games. You won't hate it here. Ah, oh, you beat me. I still love this. No. I love you.
my name is Melanie Scanlon. I teach a couple of the classes here. I help out with others. I started as a volunteer earlier this summer. So we have this awesome thing called the Lobster Trap Christmas Tree, which we build every year. Um, we take all the traps, the local traps, and we build them up into a huge Christmas tree shape. I think this is our seventh year. It's the seventh year for the Lobster Trap Christmas Tree. Um, it gets bigger every year. It's actually literally taller um, every year. I think it's, it's over 100 feet this year. It's pretty tall. And then we do a buoy auction at the end. So at the buoy auction, all the community is welcome. Most of the community shows up. Um, and the parents get to go, and everyone has their buoy. And we auction it off, and the parents come in, and they bid for the kids' buoy. And sometimes they get outbid, which is a little tricky. Um, but we try to be as accommodating as possible. So everyone kind of enjoys the event. All the schools have their own day, and you get about 200 kids to come in here through that. Um, and it's really, really, it's, it's huge. It, a lot of, it's just exposure for the place and for the kids. And it's fun to see them like interacting and trading ideas for, for what they, the designs they want to put on their buoy and stuff. Hey, thank you. That is perfect. Thank you. Oh, done what? You should have done R2D2. That would have been a great snowflake. Um, side projects while we're here, paper snowflakes. Art Haven is a great space. We um, offer a lot of free and reduced classes to the local community. We also do um, full classes, but we judge it based on income. We do painting, drawing, clayworks, pottery, lots and lots of classes because the arts are a little bit lacking um, for after school programs. So we thought it would be a great idea to bring them in here and uh, kind of expose them to that. I think every kid needs to be exposed to a little bit more creativity. Welcome back to Awesome Gloucester. I'm here at the Magnolia Library and Cultural Center in Magnolia, Gloucester. Today we're going to be going to Henry Allen's North Shore Folklore Theater Company. Come on inside and join me. Henry Allen, Sandy Jones. Oh, this place looks beautiful. Congratulations Thank on your you new so home. Thank you so much. Welcome my friend. to Magnolia and to Thanks. Awesome Gloucester. Oh, we're so happy to do so it. Happy. Thanks. I'm so glad you could be on the show. Well, not that I have to welcome you to Awesome Gloucester. Well, but, you know. Gloucester's awesome on its own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the Mass Cultural Council uh, has expressed to me that we are very likely a unique theater in the state, maybe even in the country, a theater that is dedicated to taking the stories that are otherwise dying with the people that carry them and preserving and protecting the cultural heritage mm -hmm. through living theater. Um, you know, there are other folk theaters, there are other history theaters around the country, but as far as we know, we are the only one that really hones in on this unique community. Our mm -hmm. theater is by, about, and for this community. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I, I found living in countries around the world was that people still tell their stories. It's such a, a deep part of the core of their identity is the shoulders that they stand on and their family history is so valued. I find since the 1980s, since I came back here, that we don't tell our stories as much anymore. Local schools are not teaching local history anymore. And so where is that sense of place? How do you know who you are if you don't know where you come from? Mm -hmm. And theater is a unique art in that it's a living story. Gloucester Boy, you know, the, the, the Portuguese community is foundational to Gloucester's history. And we don't hear a whole lot about it anymore. Yeah, the do. festivals have really kind of dwindled down to, you know, people in the Portuguese community, some of them don't even know what the festivals are about anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's devastating to a culture. Mm -hmm. um, Gloucester was one of the first places in history outside of the Azores that the crowning festival happened. Um, that's significant and so to be able to tell that story through living theaters is very powerful um, and it gives us as an audience a chance to reflect on our past, to learn from the past, to be inspired from the past to look toward a, a better future. The other thing that I found is that the theater is a mirror. It's a way to reflect back to ourselves what is wonderful about our community, what our challenges are, how to think outside the box in a safe environment, and create dialogue, create discussion about some of these hot topics. We want to give that opportunity, and we also want to, um, you know, the reason that I do this, and, and that we make every ticket a suggested donation, is to expose our young people to a living art. Um, theater in this country has become, I think, pretty elitist, and, and tickets are out of, the financial range for a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. So 
If you can afford our suggested donation, which is somewhere between 50 and 30 bucks, great. If you can't, great, come anyway. Right. We need you in the theater as much as you need the theater. And this is what this theater is about. It's about community with the families, you know, mm. that we can all get involved together. That it's open door, we can sit and watch our children just do their thing with acting, singing, dancing, writing, and just amazing work. And it, it is work for the whole family mm -hmm. and the ability that we're able to just get involved and become a community family together and just see the magic happen on stage. We're actually year round here in Magnolia now uh, at yeah. one Lexington mm -hmm. Avenue and so this is kind of our studio space upstairs for classes, workshops, our office administrative function. We also have Folk U which is our adult training program uh, mm -hmm. for 21 plus and we develop projects, we develop talent and give people an opportunity in their adult years to meet the stage or meet writing or... So anyone who is interested in theater could contact you guys regardless if they have any experience and could get involved. There are people in our company who are in their 60s and had never even seen a live theatrical performance mm -hmm. in their lifetime. So experience doesn't matter. It's the impulse that you have to do this work. Uh, we also have our ASAP mm -hmm. after school, school acting, acting program, program for Thursdays. nine to mm -hmm. 13 year olds. Uh, we love the mixed age groups because the older kids really benefit from being in a leadership position and um, sort of assisting with the younger ones. We have um, our budding artists class, which is for four to eight year olds. Not a lot of theater is happening for that age group. And it's really a time in the foundation years of a child's mm -hmm. life where we need to work that imagination muscle and get them gently dipping their toes into the world of creative imagination. A big part of what we do is laying a foundation, uh, no matter what stage of life. We have our Youth Arts Conservatory Lab as well for 14 to 21 year olds who know in their soul they belong in the arts, whether it's writing, design, performance, music, and, um, and we bridge them with mentors in this community who are working artists, right, so that we can move the stones out of their path in a way. Um, I, I don't think there's enough mentorship happening here with our youth. And so that's an answer, uh, is to bridge our youth who are really planning on entering the creative mm -hmm. field, which is very competitive okay. and in the 21st century is very different. To give them some place in the Gloucester area rather than having to move into Boston or New mm -hmm. York, is, is, that's an amazing... And opportunity. we bring people in from Boston to New York. We bring people in, we Skype to Brazil, we Skype to Fiji, we Skype to all different places. So they're really getting a global sense of the fraternity and sorority that the creative arts is around the world and really benefiting from those influences. Absorbed. 
That's why you get that. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It's sweet, but it's not sweet. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. So, wow. They're really rocking out. Really popping. I mean, this, this is an art form that goes way back, huh? Actually, it's German. It's from German. German, yeah. Smells so good. Oh, wow. So what I'm doing now is I'm removing the excess sugar from the kettle because it gets cold and it gets turns brown. And if I don't do that, the next batch will look like that uh -huh. instead of white. Yeah. I gotta try some now, you know. Thank you so much for joining us on Awesome Gloucester. I hope you've enjoyed our show. If you know of any organization that would like to be featured on our show, please contact us. Thank you and have an awesome day. Washed up on shore